Hi, welcome to Unit 2.5 of Calculus. We're going to talk about differentiability of a function now that you know about limits, continuity, and our derivative shortcuts. So, today we're going to evaluate differentiability at certain points. We're going to do it conceptually, algebraically, and graphically. Differentiable functions are functions whose derivative exists at every point in its domain. You can also talk about on certain intervals. You can also talk about at certain points. And remember, functions can be differentiable more than once. I can have a differentiable function, a twice differentiable, a thrice, a four times, etc., until a function is no longer differentiable. In order to solve for differentiability, you have to know first and foremost, is it continuous? And then finally, does the left-hand derivative equal my right-hand derivative? And remember, we can use limit notation for this. Uh, this is your formal definition of a derivative right here. We also see this formula down here. This is what I would use if I couldn't use a shorthand, if I couldn't use a graphical analysis of my derivative, then I would have to use this formula down here. So this is the one that you should uh, memorize for differentiability. Now, just I'm going to pause for a second and talk about the flashcards you should be making. As you make these flashcards, make sure, because as you can see, a lot of these equations kind of look the same. Well, that's because, especially when we talk about derivatives, all everything we've talked to up until this point is are just building blocks for derivatives. So. A lot of our formulas can look the same. So when you're writing them down, make sure you identify what its use is. It's not good to memorize a formula if you don't know what you need that formula for. So make sure you're putting that onto your flashcards. Okay. But remember, in order to figure out continuity and throw some facts at you, you need to know that the limit exists that the function value exists, and that the limit equals the function value. And remember, in continuity, all I really have to have memorized is this third part, because that is the formal definition of continuity. Why? Because in order to figure out the limit right here, I have to know that the limit from the left and the limit from the right equal each other. So you're doing that part, you just not, aren't breaking it down step by step. Um, it is possible to test for continuity and find out a function is continuous, but not differentiable. There's three instances we can see visually. We can tell that if it's a corner, so as you can see, I come along and choop, choop, a sharp corner. Then we have cusps. These, I'm coming along and I've got a rounded edge coming in, so we've got some cusps going on. And finally, the most missed one is our vertical tangent. This is the one that if on an AP question you were given a um, graph and you were told identify points that were not differentiable this is the question that this is the part that you would miss most often you might recognize the corner you might recognize the cusp but you might miss that vertical tangent tangent so when you're making your flashcards make sure you highlight glitter whatever you have to do to remember this one is where we're gonna forget our we're gonna miss a point because we don't remember vertical tangents are also not differentiable okay so let's do our first example problem we have this question and it says evaluate whether or not f of x is differentiable at x equals 2. So this is the point that I'm looking at and the three things I'm going to figure out. Well, first, first of all, I'm going to figure out continuity. That's really two things. And the next thing I'm going to figure out is my left hand derivative equals my right hand derivative. But in continuity, I'm going to look for a limit and I'm going to look for that function value. Now, when we're talking about differentiability, function values are real easy to test or look for visually because with the piecewise, when we're talking about algebraically, with piecewise, we can literally just look. If there's an equal to, that means your function value exists. We don't know if the function value matches the limit, but you know your function value exists. So first things first, let's test our limits. My limit from the left. So first I got to figure out what's my left. This is x is greater. This is from my right. This is my left. So my limit from the left would be f of x is simply 3. There's no equation. It's just 3. That means when I plug in 2, it's still 3. Then my limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x would be equal to 5x minus 7. So 5 times 2 minus 7, which is equal to 10 minus 7, which is equal to 3. And my function value is also equal to three because that's the, this equation right down here. So my limits exist, my function. So this whole thing is continuous for sure. We know that this is continuous, but we still don't know whether it's differentiable. So now for differentiability, we're gonna look at the left-hand derivative and we're gonna look at the right-hand derivative. So from the left, my derivative, so f prime, um, of x, sorry, would be equal to my limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x, uh, that whole like f of x minus f of whatever. So that's really going to be the derivative 
from the left, which is simply the derivative of three, which is equal to zero. So my left-hand derivative is zero. From the right, my f prime would be the derivative of five x minus seven, and so that would be the derivative of 5x because this is going to zero out. The derivative of 5x is 5. So as you can see, my left-hand derivative and my right-hand derivative do not equal each other. So I could say f of x is continuous at x equals 2, but it is not differentiable because... My left-hand derivative does not equal my right-hand derivative. Next question. So here we have a graphical analysis. Again, this is a simple um, parent, or sorry, graph. This is a simple piecewise function. And so we're supposed to find the points where f of x is not differentiable and justify. And I'm just looking at my graph, I can see a non-differentiable point right here. I've got a corner. I look at throughout, I don't see a cusp, and I don't see vertical tangents. So I only see that corner. But I can recognize at x equals 1, f of x is not differentiable, but I need my because, right? When we write our pre-response statements, because. What's my because? Well, is, does my, is it continuous? Yes, it is continuous. My function value at 1 exists, and that's equal to my limit. So I can't, I can't say it's not differentiable because of continuity. It's not differentiable because the left-hand derivative does not equal the right-hand derivative. So i got to figure out what those are. My left-hand derivative is going to be equal to my derivative from the left. But how do I figure out the derivative from the left in a graph? Well, that's really simple, guys. Remember, my derivative is my slope. Say that out loud. Say that a million times because in class, I'm going to make you say it a million more times. My slope is my derivative and my derivative is my slope. Why? Because right here, we have a visual representation. How do I figure out the derivative from the left? I look at the slope. This is a parent function. This is the constant. So its slope has to be zero. So that means my left-hand derivative is equal to zero. Again, I look at the right. That's a linear parent function. So I look for its m, its slope. Its slope is at least up one, maybe over three or over one. So it might be a positive one. It might be up one, one and a half. It might be up one over two. I'm not 100% sure there because I can't see its cross points. But one thing I do know is that my derivative from the right, my right hand derivative, is some sort of positive numeric number. So that means because my left-hand derivative does not equal my right-hand derivative. Next question. So here we have a true AP question. It's from the 1981 AB. I believe this was a free response. So it was broken up into two parts. First thing we had to figure out was continuity. And because we're going to figure out continuity, we're probably figuring out differentiability. So to figure out continuity, we've done this before. We simply set 2x plus 1 equal to 1 half x squared plus k, and we evaluate at 2. So that's going to be 2 times 2 plus 1 is equal to 1 half 2 squared plus k. 2 squared is 4. 4 over 2 is 2. This is 4. 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. Subtract my 2s from both sides, so k equals 3. So for what value of k to be continuous, we would have k equals 3. Now my next question, we know in the previous one k equals 3, but this says let k equal 4 to determine whether f is differentiable. Well, immediately we should know. If k can't equal 3, then it's not continuous. So we know our answer for differentiability is going to be no. So I can go ahead and start my question. f of x is not differentiable. At x equals 2 because I know that's going to happen. Now let's do our actual work. Um, the only thing I have to prove is that it's not going to be continuous. So my limit as x approaches 2 from the left, this is my left, this is my right, uh, f of x would be 2 times 2 plus 1, so 5. My limit as x approaches 2 from the right, and remember this value is now 4 of f of x would be 2, sorry, 1 half times 2 squared plus 4. That again is 4. 4 over 2 is simply 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. So my limits don't equal. It's not differentiable because it is not continuous because my limit, my limit from the left does not equal my limit from the right.
and that's it. But what if it didn't say let k equal four? What if it said using your previous k value because that's that's another free response concept, right? So our previous k value is k equals three. So that means I'm going to erase this and make this a three. So we know our limit. We know it's we know it's already continuous. We solved that in part a. So now all we have to do is figure out whether it's differentiable, which means I need to know my left-hand derivative equals my right-hand derivative. So let's solve the left-hand and the right-hand derivative. My left-hand derivative, f prime, as x approaches 2 from the left, that's this left, this is right, that is going to be uh, 2. My f prime, as x approaches 2 from the right, is going to be... Uh, 1 half x squared, I bring that 2 down, so that's going to cancel out. So that's simply just going to be equal to x, and my x at that point is 2, so that's also equal to 2. So this one would be differentiable. At x equals 2, f of x is differentiable, yeah, 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 because it is continuous. And don't forget to always include the continuity. It is continuous and left-hand derivative equals right-hand derivative. So you would include all that information. All right, here we have another. And as you can see, it's a lot. So I remind you, don't panic. Please don't panic. Okay, so these are what we call our conceptual questions. Okay, I don't need algebra. I don't need a graph. I don't need any of that information in order to answer this. I don't know where that ink came from, my bad. In order to answer this, because all I need to know is I can rely on my conceptual process. And what do I do? I'm going to break each part down in the question, and then all I'm going to do is look one, two, and three, and figure out any of these I can cross out. That's all we're going to do. So let f be a function. So all I need to know from that sentence is that we have some function f. So we know we have f of x. That all of this means that it's equal to 5. Well, what do I recognize about that? That's the formal definition of a derivative. So if that's the formal definition of a derivative, what did that tell me? It told me f of x is differentiable. If, it, if f of x is differentiable, that means f of x must also be continuous. So what's true? Is f of x continuous? Heck yeah, it is. Is it differentiable? Heck yeah, it is. Let's look at part three. The derivative of f is continuous at x equals 2. Well, let's break this down. What does the derivative of f mean? Doesn't that just mean f prime of x? Well, do I have any information about f prime of x except that it exists? No, that's all I know. I know it exists. I don't know anything about f prime of x because they didn't give me any other information about f prime of x except that it exists. That's the only information they gave me. So this has to be my problem child. This has to be the bad boy. This is what we don't like to see. So. Is it one only? No. Is it two only? No. Does it include three? Absolutely not. So my only answer is C. And my final question for you guys is a visual representation. Again, I'm going to go through this and just erase what I don't want. So I'm going to start with my end question. For each blah, 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 find the value and explain why it does not exist. Uh, I'm going to make an edit for this. It should say does or does not is what it should have said does or does not exist. So a car is traveling on a straight road. So that tells me that from start to finish, we're going straight, we're not curving, we're not turning around, we're not doing any of that. Okay, cool, that's in my head. That just tells me that I don't have to account for changes of direction. Cool, now I can erase it. For zero to 24 seconds, well, I can see that on my graph, so I'm gonna cross it out. The car's velocity, meters per second, again, I can see that on my graph. I can see all of this first question first point on my graph. So now I'm just going to go to my graph and answer the information for V prime of four. So that's this point right here. And V prime of 20, that would be approximately this point right here. So let's look at V prime of four. So the things we have to ask, is it continuous and is it differentiable? So first look at continuity. The limit from the left exists. The limit from the right exists. My function value exists, and they all equal 20. So that means it is continuous. But is it differentiable? My left-hand derivative is the derivative of this linear slope, which is at least up 20 over 4, which we can simplify to 5. And my right-hand derivative is going to be this constant. So I can go ahead and say my left-hand derivative is 20 over 4, and my right-hand derivative is 0. They don't equal each other. This is why it does not exist. So I could write that formal sentence. Then it's asking about v prime of 20. So again, continuous and differentiable. So what's my limit as I look at approximately 20, which is about right here? My limit from the left is 10. My limit from the right is 10. My function value is 10. So yes, 
it's continuous, check mark. Okay, but now we look back at differentiability. My derivative from the left is this linear line. My derivative from the right is this linear line. Well, just looking at it, we know our answer, but let's prove it. So the left-hand derivative is equal to, what's my slope here? Down 20 over 8. Okay, so negative 20 over 8. My right-hand derivative is also equal to negative 20 over 8. Since they both equal each other, it is differentiable, and that would be my explanation on why it does exist. Now, this question wasn't asked, but I'm going to go ahead and throw it in there. What about at v prime of 16? No, 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 no. Go back. My bad. Okay. What about at v prime of 16? Because that question wasn't asked, but... It's important to recognize we have another corner there. So again, my this is continuous, but it is not differentiable. Why? Because the limit, sorry, my left-hand derivative will not equal my right-hand derivative because I can just look at my graph. My left-hand derivative is constant, so it's zero. My right-hand derivative is this linear line of negative 20 over 8. We already did all those, so that's why we know that answer. So this is how you could answer any graph question regarding that. Now here is your homework problem. Again, remember, do not panic. Take it step by step and follow these procedures and be prepared to show me this in class. Some closure for you guys. Here's differentiability again. First, you have to test for continuity. You test the limit from the left. You test the limit from the right. You test the function value at that point. If they all equal the same, you're good to go on continuity. But differentiability is not continuity. So you have to test one more concept, the left-hand derivative and the right-hand derivative. You can use your derivative shortcuts. You can use the um, you can use the equation, the limit as x approaches a from either the right or the left of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. This formula should look familiar because that's the f of b minus f of a formula is what that, where that kind of comes from. So you can also use that formula for your left and right hand derivatives. Remember, if you're using graphs, my derivative is my slope. So remember that. Tell me that back. My derivative is my slope. My slope is my derivative. Say it a million times. So my derivative is my slope. That means I can just literally look at pieces of an equation and figure out their, their m because their m is my derivative. Okay, that's about it for differentiability. Remember your three visual representations. We have a corner, we have our cusp, and we have vertical tangents. Never forget your vertical tangent. And I will see y'all in class.